Okay, so <clears throat> this is the uh, 2009 Infiniti G37S, and um, we're going to replace the rear brake pads and rotors. One of the first things you want to do is uh, open up the brake fluid reservoir, which I've already done here. And then I'm going to take a look at the tools we have available. Uh, we have a uh, little floor jack here. Um, run out gauge, torque wrench, um, that's what else we got here, crow's foot, 19 millimeter crow's foot, hammer, impact gun, uh, with a 19, or is it a 21, 21 millimeter socket, 19 millimeter wrench, we're gonna need this. And uh, what else we got here? This is a uh, hub cleaning tool right here. You can attach it to any kind of a drill. And uh, brake rotor, uh, wa uh, conical washers. And of course, a pad separator. And then you got the breathing protection right here. This is a heparated uh, filtration uh, mask, so you can uh, you don't have to breathe brake dust. A couple pieces of wood, a rag, and a, uh, a hammer. And of course, a big piece of wood in case we need to knock the rotor off. So, <clears throat> let's get started. Alright, so we're going to take the screwdriver and at the back of these, these little rods here that go through these, these two, there's a Phillips head on there so we're going to rotate that until we can see that pad the until we can see the retaining clip the cotter pin right there go ahead and grab that out and we won't be needing these the new pads come with new clips okay and then you know, probably failed to mention we need a couple things that are on here Now I've got a small punch here, this guy here, and I use safety goggles while I'm wearing glasses, so make sure you use some kind of protection. I've got both of the cotter pins out, so we're going to go ahead and lightly tap that, that pin out. Not all the way, just, just enough, so we can grab it at the edge, like that. And the next step here... Okay, <clears throat> so now you need to push the pads in. This is the step where you want to watch the brake fluid level in the reservoir. And one thing to remember is when you're pushing the piston back in here, the, there's actually two of them. You, ideally, you'd want to have two of these so you can push the piston more or less evenly. Uh, I found this works pretty well. If you're just careful and you go slow, because you don't want to scuff the the wall of the of the bore. Let's go check the progress on the brake fluid level up there. And it's getting up there. I used to have music in my videos and then YouTube decided it'd start flagging my videos because they had copyrighted content on there. So much for music while you work. Take another look. Make sure I'm not 
Let's put my brake fluid out. Nope, still got some space. I think that's about as far as my tool will allow me to push these out. I think it's sufficient. We'll find out soon enough. So now, one of the things you're going to want to do, well, the next thing we're going to need to do is you know, remove this caliper assembly from the knuckle jack, knuckle back there. So, let me show you guys. So this bolt here, this bolt actually came from in here. Like that, and you can see that's a really tight fit. Uh, it's pretty, pretty much near impossible to get a socket on that. And what you end up having to do is remove this this rod here. I think this is called the radius rod. Uh, the problem with that is that you have to recheck the alignment and you have to tighten this, uh, tighten it down with the vehicle back on on the ground, and it's kind of inconvenient for me. So I actually found a workaround without having to remove this. Uh, what you can do is take your 19 millimeter and some other. Now, if you have a really long 19, you probably wouldn't need to do this, but essentially you put them together like this. So, you can stick that on there, stick this in here, you nice, nice long, uh, lots of leverage. Break it loose, just break it loose. As soon as you break it loose, disconnect it, and then uh, by hand, or maybe by doing something like this, uh, loosen the bolt. And to torque it down later, a socket would fit with a smaller uh, 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. Uh, the other bolt is a lot, a lot easier to remove. Simply need a breaker bar with a 19 millimeter socket. Before we remove this, we're going to want to set up a little support for this caliper. So now, what you want to do, you want to loosen the parking brake all the way. I don't know if you guys can see, but essentially there's a hole right here, and you go ahead and just keep, actually you go up like this, keep spinning that wheel up until it won't go anymore, and then you know it's loosened all the way.
Right, so now we're starting to feel some resistance. Let's see if we, yep, it's still loose. So now it's parking brakes been loosened all the way. So the next step is to knock this rotor off. And then we're gonna put some lugs on here. Make sure it doesn't fly out or mess something up. Take our wooden rod and a big mallet. All right, so now we've got it loose. You can see why you probably want to wear breathing protection here.
Now I've removed my breathing protection. I don't really think I need that anymore. Using a torque stick here. Secure these lugs. It so it is properly in proper reading. That looks good. So we want to turn clockwise. So we're approximately at zero. Now we're about 0.5. A little higher than 0.5. Going down to negative 0.5. That's about one one thousandth of lateral run out. And I think, even though we don't have to, I think we can do better than that. Now I've got the best lateral run out measurement here. This was uh, we just measured point, uh, 0. Point, basically 5. 5 ten thousandths of an inch.
parking brake adjustment. We're going to click this back down all the way until the rotor stops moving. Alright, now I'm starting to feel resistance. Okay, the rotor's locked. So we're going to find where one click makes it move. I don't actually know if that was a click or not. There we go, that's a click right there. Now, now we've got movement. So four more clicks. Just a little bit of drag right there. Because once you start driving, the shoes, uh, they kind of float, so they'll even out. Piston seals. All the dirt and old brake dust and stuff. Alright, now I've got those bolts pre-tightened. I'm going to use a torque wrench and I'm going to snug them down to 60 foot-pounds. Now this is where I ran into a little confusion with the service manual. They state they want you to use 28 foot-pounds, but it's not clear whether they're talking about these bolts here or those bolts right there, and I couldn't actually find the torque specs for the other bolts. So I'm just going to use the uh, torque specs for the two, the two piston, the single piston type which uh, is around 60 pounds, 60 foot pounds.
not really many options. Just barely enough room to clear. All right, so now those those are torqued down. That's good. Now I gotta put the new pads on. Before we put the new pads on, we need to clean the old the old pens. Need to be cleaned. And also the old hardware needs to be wiped down as well. You can see the part here that is the metal that the, the half part that is missing that goes towards away from where the holes for the slide pins are. I'm gonna make sure we install it the same way. Now, it looks like we got a hole.
one thing I like to do is I like to put a little on the edges here, even though it's not really required. So the inside pad is this one. I'm going to kind of slide it in there. The outside pad is this one here. It doesn't have a notch. Definitely a tight fit there. Let's get it and push the piston back quite far enough. But it's good enough. Slide pins. Put a little bit of this uh, paste on here. Mm-hmm. 